Hi, I'm Ranger Dave, here at a rainy morning at Dickey Ridge Visitor Center. I wanted to come to you guys anyway and tell you a little bit about our history here at Dickey Ridge. While it's not the only visitor center, there's two here in Shenandoah National Park, it is our older visitor center, but it has a rustic history here that's become a valuable resource for all visitors throughout the park. And I'd like you to join me as we go through the history here at Dickey Ridge, learning about a cool, unique word I love to say, parkitecture. Now, if that sounds like a made up word to you, it kind of is. It's the combination of park and architecture into one word. Now, the definition may seem like, oh, it's just a building and it's old or it's brown, as you can see, but there's more to it. Parkitecture is a sort of sense of meaning, a welcoming warmth, the design of the building that goes in to become what we aim to embrace, park service traditions, a building that's more than just a building, a building that has a story. So I'd like you to join me as we look at the story of Dickey Ridge Visitor Center. Come along. To start off on this journey, we'll actually have to start all the way at the beginning of the Skyline Drive. This building here, Dickey Ridge, wasn't actually even a thought until a few years after the drive began. You see, in 1939, the Virginia Skyline Company said, hey, Skyland's doing such a good job, we should have a lodge in the north. And so they went to Marcellus Wright Jr. and said, will you design us a building? And he said, sure, on one condition. And he's quoted saying, I want the building to blend unobtrusively into the environment. That brings us back to our park architecture. He wanted this building design to be not seen by anybody, but enjoyed by all. And we can see that in the construction from the outside, from the walls that line the north, south, and west wall, horizontal wood, rough cut to seem natural. And of course, on the east main entrance side, when it's a lodge, the stone cut into squares and laid by hand to give a grand entrance on your way into the lodge. Now, it wasn't just the stone and the wood that was cut here, but also these shingles were actually made out of a unique material. They're actually made out of concrete. And I have a portion of one right here. Now this roof was built in 1939, all right? The shingles, unfortunately, today aren't original. They were replaced in 1995. But for anybody who's a roofer out there, if you know a roof that lasts 54 years, that's pretty amazing if you ask me. And I have to say this is about, I don't know, three to five pounds, but it's only about half a shingle as you can see it's broke off. If you can count them, just 10 shingles, that's 50 pounds roughly on the roof. This is a roof that was built to last here at Dickey Ridge, just like the history. There's also more to it. On this ground right here, this flagstone patio that we're on has a rich history. While it's being maintained, it's still beautiful to enjoy. But it's not just the outside that we want to worry about and learn about. Come with me on the inside and we'll see our secrets that we have in there. And coming in from the outside of the building, Marcellus Wright Jr. wanted to stick with that mentality of having this blend into his surroundings. So much so that he actually sourced all the materials for the lodge locally from this surrounding area. He didn't want things shipped from across the country to make it stand out. He wanted it to embrace what Shenandoah was. So much so that this wall right here and all the walls of this building are made out of wormy chestnut. Now you ask yourself, what's wormy chestnut? Well, it's just chestnut trees, but that were affected by the blight. You see, in the 1930s, we had a fungus that came in and swept across the United States, affecting pretty much all of the chestnut population here. What it would do is basically, unfortunately, kill our chestnuts and allow for other insects and worms to burrow into them. This was seen as a lower quality wood, even though there was abundance of it he decided to ask the Civilian Conservation Corps boys to mill the chestnut for this building and is still standing to this day. Not just the chestnut walls, but also the sconces that are original here in this building. 
that we still use for lighting to welcome our visitors. This wall, the lighting, along with the fireplaces, all built by hand for us here at the Visitor Center. Bringing us from this history here in the building came the sort of prime of the Dickey Ridge Lodge. Visitors came from Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia, and the surrounding areas to escape the heat of the hot summers. Here, in a lodge that could hold 100 guests, feed them lunch, dancing late into the night on the front terrace, having a wonderful time. So much so that the Virginia Skyline Company said, hey, we need people here. Why don't we have them stay overnight? So 12 cabins were constructed just north of the visitor center for up to 60 guests to stay and enjoy. It was quite an adventure to come experience Dickey Ridge in its prime. Unfortunately, if we're familiar with history, the prime of Dickey Ridge didn't last too long. The building was finished in 1939, and by the 1940s, we had entered World War II. Due to rations and limiting supplies, the lodge had to close down for a little bit, and it was seen as, would we ever open again? It tried a few times after the war, but eventually into the 1950s, Dickey Ridge was a dwindling lodge. So much so that in 1951, the Virginia Skyline Company looked into the possibility of salvaging what they could here. Eight of the original 12 cabins were able to be saved and brought to other locations, including Skyland and Lewis Mountain Campground, of which you can rent and stay in to this day. And here's a hint. If you want to know which ones are those, they're named after trees. Now, all eight cabins didn't make it to Skyland and Lewis Mountain. Only one didn't make it all the way down. And a hint to that comes to the tunnel that we have in the park. One cabin was just too wide to fit through the tunnel. So it got brought back to Elk Wallow. Now, you can't go into that cabin at Elk Wallow, but you can see it from the outside because the concessionaire still uses it today for supplies, storage, and office space. And I think that's pretty cool that we still have a cabin in the North District. Once those cabins were relocated, the Skyline, Virginia Skyline Company looked to the Park Service and said, would you like this building? Do you want to use it? And after a few years of thought, the Park Service purchased Dickey Ridge Lodge to become the Dickey Ridge Visitor Center. And that's what we're going to look into now, where this park architecture brought us in the 1960s for Dickey Ridge. So let's go explore some of our updated experiences that we can have today. Coming into the Park Service purchasing Dickey Ridge Lodge came with expansions and renovations, while also keeping in mind the art of that park architecture. You see, it was only 20 years old, the building was. And they said, well, what, do we want to tear it down and make something brand new for the 1960s? Or do we want to keep what we have here? What had been thought of so well by Marcellus Wright Jr. We decided to keep the structure, but add a little bit of our visitor center flair to it. With the addition of our exhibit area, showcasing the wildlife all throughout Shenandoah, giving visitors a sort of understanding of what they could see along the drive, from bears, raccoons, turtles, chipmunks, and even fawn, all throughout the drive you're able to experience. It wasn't just the wildlife here that we wanted to showcase. We also have our wonderful park films, and with the addition in 1960 of the auditorium, to showcase them for you guys, to welcome you another introduction way, going from our Seasons of Change, to the centerpiece of Dickey Ridge's ex exhibits. The 3D map, giving visitors a better understanding of where they are in Shenandoah, that also showcases where you're gonna head to along the Skyline Drive. But it's not just the drive that we have here in the park. We also have the Appalachian Trail, 100 miles of this trail going from Georgia to Maine. Visitors, whether they hike or drive, are welcome to stop by in Shenandoah. With the transition of the visitor center into what it is today, 
Dickey Ridge has had a long story here in the park, spanning all the way back to 1939 to present day. Sharing our experiences here, whether it's to come for a question with a ranger, a new book from the bookstore, or just to experience the rustic history we have. Parkitecture is all around us, not just here, but all in Shenandoah. So keep an eye out to see what you can see. But I'll let you in on one last thing. Before you head out and say goodbye to us here at Dickey Ridge, take in the beautiful view. I always get asked, what's your most memorable part? And the view is. And trust me, it never gets old. The only unfortunate thing is, with today being a rainy day, it's a little cloudy. But that just means you'll have to come see us here at Dickey Ridge and take the view in for yourself. <laughs>